Hello, welcome. Make sure my hat's on straight. No, oh, yeah, there you go. Hey guys, I am just actually just making sure that we are live on Facebook right now. There we go. I see it. Journey is now live. And I want to give you a couple updates as well as some Q&A uh, from this past Sunday. And uh, talk about a little bit about what's coming up next Sunday, obviously. Uh, hope you guys are going well. It's 12.15 on Wednesday at, uh, at lunch. Let me just share this real quick. Share, share, share. Uh, nope. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, so we have, um, I didn't get a chance to do the Q&A yesterday, primarily because we were, um, uh, this is a busy day. It's a three-day week, so to speak, for most of our staff. We are all preparing for Thanksgiving, and I hope that you have an amazing uh, plan for your Thanksgiving uh, holidays. I don't know if you're traveling. I don't know if you're seeing family. I don't know if you're going to be like a friend's Friendsgiving. You're going to be spending some time with uh, some friends. Uh, but here's my challenge. Just spend time with somebody. Uh, don't let a day like this, and I know for some people this is not um, the best time of year because there's sometimes other things going on, uh, but I challenge you, don't don't let it uh, stop you from being grateful. Don't let it stop you from enjoying some of the things that you uh, need to enjoy to just experience some of the things that God has for you in your life. Um, let me uh, make sure this is good here. Hold on. Uh, there we go. I'm trying to find my... Uh, my windows. Sorry, guys. Camera, camera, camera. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right. Yeah, here's our series. So um, let me go from this past Sunday and talk about what's coming up this Sunday. So this past Sunday, Zach uh, did a follow-up message for the power of emotions. And um, I only received one primary uh, question, uh, so to speak, and it kind of fits into... Um, uh, this Sunday, which is uh, Zach walked us through a very practical application of how to process our emotions. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, uh, it's we can always teach it um, a little bit and make it sound a little more simple than it actually is. And so sometimes the questions that come in are kind of driven by that, like, well, that's great. I can name it and I name it, my issue is anxiety, and I name it, and I challenge it, uh, because regardless of what I say, it's still there, and then, you know, I don't know how to tame it, you know, in terms of what what happens with this, and um, and trusting God's word, like, I've, I've read all the scriptures, you know, it says, don't worry about tomorrow, who can add a day to your life by worrying, well, it doesn't take away the anxiety. And so, um, and that's just the example in terms of one of the conversations uh, that I had. So the reason I wanted to address it is because um, that question leads us into a conversation that we're going to be having on Sunday, which is our emotions uh, and mental illness in terms of how mental illness and, and emotions kind of comes together. And my, my goal and hope for this Sunday is just to open the door to the kind of conversations we should, uh, I believe, be having as a church. I don't know if the church has done a great job addressing mental illness. And, and honestly, I mean, one of the reasons it's very difficult to address is there's over 200 different forms of considered mental disorders uh, and, and in terms of the National uh, Institute for Mental Health. I mean, there's over 200, so it gets controversial, it gets into an issue. You know, I could say depression, I could say anxiety, I could say PTSD, I could say uh, eating disorders, I could talk about, you know, uh, psychotic disorders, like schizophrenia. Like, we all have a different realm of what we think, when we think the word mental mental illness, um, we all think something different. We, some of us might think something just like depression, uh, but you can have, you know, depression and you can go through depressing feelings without necessarily being clinically depressed or actually being diagnosed that. So it's a very, very difficult thing to try to address simply. Does that make sense? It's just very hard to address simply. So as a church, we're going to talk about it. We're going to get into the conversation. We're going to have some, I'm going to see if I got any comments here, by the way. Sorry, I'm going to go look real quick. Because uh, I don't want to miss anything if people are, are talking. Uh, comments and reactions. There we go. Just in case. Oh, there it is. Kayla says hi. Michelle says hi. Laura says hi. Hi. Hi, y'all. Thanks for checking in. Um, anyway, this Sunday, we're going to talk about that. And I really do look forward to um, casting some hope, 
um, that uh, that God is not um, not is not only that He's present in the midst of our uh, mental disorders, but that that He really does have a plan. Like you know, whether it's to help us manage those things, um, whether it's to help us uh, be healed from it. Um, and whether it's something in between in terms of how he's going to redeem, um, you know, this issue that you have. And so um, we're not just going to talk about the complexity of the scale and scope of mental illness and how it plays itself out emotionally. Uh, but we're going to talk about the hope that's there and, and, and that I believe God wants us to experience uh, through Jesus. And so uh, I'm looking forward to talking about that on Sunday. Uh, again, between now and then, I hope everybody has an amazing Thanksgiving. Two more things to update you on. One is the Share Hope Project. And I will tell you, I think I shared some of it Sunday. It was a phenomenal project. I mean, guys, I can't tell you how excited I am for what we were able to see accomplished in this uh, in this just short window of time, this three and four week uh, window of time where people came together and collected. And oh my gosh, it was just awesome. And so let me give you some quick updates, okay? Um, I think with our Operation Christmas Child, we had 115 um, shoe boxes. And that, that we're already packed, packed from families. We can't thank you enough for that. We're taking them all. We'll probably have a few more trickle in, so we'll give you a number after this coming weekend, how many total we had. We probably had another 15 full bags of stuff, of the stuff that, that could have probably packed another uh, 25 to 50 you know, boxes. But we had bags full that we're taking down to the center. If you want to be a part of that, uh, please let us know. Email us. We'll get you in touch with Holly. Uh, I think she still had a few spots open uh, for the packing event on Friday at the um, at the center. Put your notification here on the comments. We'll try to connect you with the folks uh, that are going. With uh, Care Pack, we were able to launch Care Pack and basically have about 150 bags. Uh, and then uh, Josh told me that we had an, an additional probably 50 more bags of amount of stuff, but we just needed to purchase a, a few or get a few other essential items to get those other 50 bags. So I'm telling you, anywhere close to 200 bags to launch uh, Care Pack is amazing. And several people already took bags with them. We're so excited about that, beginning, the, just beginning to share hope in this way with people that are in need. I'm just so jacked about it. So please, if you haven't didn't get any Care Packs on Sunday, come this Sunday, get some more. We're going to try to work out a system that's pretty easy for you to pick them up at the church. It may take us a couple weekends. Pick them up at the church and then continue to distribute those to our partners and to other people in the Lake Norman area so that they can take part in Care Pack uh, as well. So uh, thank you guys so much. Bags of Hope really did amazing. Of course, not only Journey Church, but several churches that are part of the network for Bags of Hope, several schools, part of the Bags of Hope board. They all leverage the Share Hope project to sort of help push the Thanksgiving bags. Guys, they got over, I think it was close to 4,000 pounds of food, which means they got enough for Thanksgiving bags. And Christmas bags in terms of food, which is just awesome. And so they also got, a, uh, I think, between four and five thousand dollars in gift cards. So they were able to do all the gift cards for um, for Thanksgiving, and that just means it's a head start towards the the funds and the money they need to do gift cards for Christmas bags. So thank you guys so so much. You're amazing. Thank you so much for being a part of the Share Hope Project. I can't wait to do more of these things collectively as a church. If you didn't participate in this, you took a bag home and you were like, yeah, I'm going to try. You took a shoebox home and you never did anything with it. Listen, it's not too late. We'll have other opportunities to do it, but I challenge you. I'm challenging you right now. Take advantage of these opportunities when you have uh, the moment. Hold on, Nate just asked a question. What and where the items need to finish the bags? Oh, uh, I'll ask Josh. I mean, he's not here right now. He already took off to Ohio for Thanksgiving. But I know one was toothbrushes, and we just, like, literally by saying it out loud, uh, somebody through our office, our office uh, manager, she worked out a situation with her sister who had a uh, connection, and we already got like 100 uh, uh, toothbrushes brought in. So I don't know what the other essentials are, but I'll tell Josh to put it on this uh, video, and he will, and then, you know, hopefully you guys can know, and we can pack uh, those other 50 bags. So thanks, Nate, for asking that. That's, that's awesome, dude. Hey, uh, a couple last things. One is the marriage workshop that's next week. Uh, I'm going to be bringing that workshop to the church 
um, with a, a really a, a challenge and a message that comes from um, the John 2, John chapter 2 passage, where Jesus turns water into wine. And the whole workshop is going to be basically what happens when your wine runs out. All right. And so we're going to talk about what does it look like when your wine runs out? What does it look like when when the, the 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 joy that you felt at the beginning of your marriage runs out? What happens when the compassion you have for your your spouse and the struggles that they've always had? What happens when that runs out? What happens when the love the your definition of love that you bring to the marriage uh, just isn't enough? Anymore. And listen, guys, if you haven't already run into some of this in your marriage, uh, you, you probably will. Like eventually we all bring our very best into our marriage and eventually our very best runs out. And so what we're going to do is talk about what does it look like to invite Jesus into uh, that part of our lives? What does it look like to invite Jesus into our marriages and see him make the very best wine, see him make the very best uh, solutions in our life? Uh, out of what we, you know, what the limited amount of things that we're able to bring to our marriage. So I'm taking do, doing that on uh, November Wednesday, November 28th. You have to register. Go to the journey online. Uh, I'll try to remember to put that in the comments the link. But go to the journey online. Um, click uh, the link to register. Or the click the events, and you'll go and register uh, for that. Last but not least, I wanted to we just talked about it this morning is uh, we are doing something very different in December with baptism. Um, we've been doing some things differently with baptism in our service, and we had a kid splash, two kid splash events where we did it on Saturday uh, with some of our children and family, kind of like we do with baby dedication. But we're kind of combining those things this this time in December. Um, we have, I think, five, I want to say five, four to five currently uh, scheduled to be baptized, and we're going to do it on Sunday morning between services, okay? We're doing it Sunday morning between services. So what that means is we want as many people as possible as a, ch- as a church to come celebrate with these families and these adults who are choosing to get baptized, uh, but we're going to do it between our services. So if you go to the first service, you can just stay a few minutes after <clears throat> Sorry, you're gonna go stay a few minutes after. If you go to, the, if you're coming to the second service, we're gonna ask you that day to come a little early. Come a little early and celebrate with those families uh, the step in baptism that they and their children are making. And that's gonna be on December 9th. So December 2nd is our Global Outreach Sunday. I'm really excited about that. Man, there's going to be some great stuff happening in December. December 2nd starts and kicks off Global Outreach. December 9th kicks off a new Christmas series. But on that Sunday, Kids Splash Baptism, and I say Kids Splash because the majority of them are are, are kids, um, are, we're doing baptism in between services. So we'll let you know more about that through emails and on Sunday morning and get you involved. But we want to make sure that everybody that can make it and be a part of of um, this step that kids especially are taking. We want our church to be able to celebrate with them. So we're going to do it between services on December 9th, and that is going to be, uh, we'll let you know more and more as we get there. Anyway, guys, uh, hopefully that answered some questions. If you have more questions about this series, please don't hesitate to to email or text or even just put it on our Facebook page. Uh, We'll try to constantly get back and answer some of those questions and engage in the conversation. I'm looking forward to this Sunday as we talk about emotions and mental illness, and I really do think God's going to do an amazing work. I'm going to finish this uh, this session with just an, uh, uh, an asking for prayer. Okay, Uh, we had this quick discussion this morning with some of our staff about um, just this this past weekend, this past Saturday and Sunday. There were so many great things happening, but there were also so many uh, not bad things, but things that are just uh, so there was some tragedy that happened. There were some uh, illnesses that were happening. There were some accidents that happened. There were some things that came out of the blue for some of our staff and some of our people. Um, and it was strange how all of that was happening over the weekend at the same time that we were experiencing this high and this great stuff with the Share Hope Project. And so we're just asking people to pray. Uh, right now, we're just asking people to pray. Pray for our church. Pray for the people in 
our church right now. Like there's a lot of this, these are things that are maybe not necessarily you wouldn't think they're combined. You wouldn't think that our partner night and uh, Sunday and some other things that can happen would that people would you know immediately start assuming things or changing things or the Share Hope project as good as it was that it means something else. And this is why as a church we really really want to pray that uh, we would just not let the enemy have a foothold in any of these uh, these things that are happening outside of our control. Uh, and we don't want the enemy to have a foothold in any of the partners of our church in terms of what they're experiencing and how it is that they are moving forward, uh, you know, as a part of Journey Church. And so, guys, just pray. I'm just asking you to pray for uh, pray for our church. Remember, you know, take the opportunity to remember uh, what God has been doing this past year, why it is you're thankful, why it is you're grateful for the church that you get to be a part of. And then, guys, anything that you're feeling that, um, that conflicts with that, any negative feelings you have or stuff that's going on in your life or some of the things that are outside of your control. We shared on Partner Night some of the current state of where we are as a church. Any of these things that you're feeling that you start conflicting with just your gratitude to what God's been doing in your life or your gratitude for the church, uh, just get that out in the open. Start having that conversation. Bring it to God first in prayer and see what God wants to do through it. And then please pray for our staff, for our key leadership, for our volunteers, for our partners, and for our church. Because we really do believe that first and foremost, we should be taking these things to God and then working them out as quickly and as best we can as a church together. We have so many people, guys, in our church that are hurting, uh, that have just this past week experienced incredible loss, and they're they're going through incredible struggle, um, and we need to do our best as a church to pray for them as well as just praying for the church as a whole. Okay, I love you guys, and seriously, I'm so thankful for uh, this church, and I'm so thankful for every one of you. And uh, I hope that that's something that you can bring to your Thanksgiving in terms of remembering, uh, as we talked about at the partner night, remembering and understanding the purpose of why God calls us to recall the great deeds that He's done, to recall what He's been able to do in your life this year. And I hope that takes you through and gives you an amazing, awesome, joy-filled Thanksgiving. Love you guys. Have a great day.